Ever since we learned that Jean-Luc Picard departed the USS Enterprise E, many of us have wondered who took command of the Federation's flagship. Well, today we finally have that answer for all of you. Hey everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome to Trek Central. As mentioned in the intro, we're going to be talking about Star Trek's latest Enterprise to date, the USS Enterprise E, last seen on screen in 2002's Star Trek Nemesis. With the launch of Star Trek Picard set 20 years after the events of Nemesis, there has been plenty of lore to fill in regarding events in the Star Trek universe. One of our big questions has been, who took command of the Enterprise E when Jean-Luc Picard departed the vessel? Today we have the answer, so let's dive in. As a warning, this video will contain spoilers for Star Trek Picard, IDW's Countdown comic, and Una McCormack's new book, The Last Best Hope. You have been warned. Let's take a few steps back to where we last saw the Sovereign-class USS Enterprise-E on our screens. The final scenes of Star Trek Nemesis, taking place in the in-universe year of 2379, saw the ship's long-standing first officer depart for a command of his own. William T. Riker finally said goodbye to the XO position and to the rank of commander as he'd go on to captain the USS Titan on many new voyages. Now with Riker's departure, the first officer's position was left vacant. Many assumed that Lieutenant Commander Data would be the one to assume a position. Sadly, due to his death in the Battle of the Basin Rift, that was no longer an option. To learn more about the first officer's position of the Enterprise-E, we now need to step into the extended canon of the Star Trek universe. The reason for this is the events that confirm who the first officer is, as well as the captain, which we'll be talking about in a moment, take place in books and comics, which are not considered mainline canon in Star Trek. I'll touch on more of this a little bit later. The brand new book, Star Trek Picard The Last Best Hope by Una McCormack confirms that as of 2381, Worf was serving as first officer to Captain Picard on the Enterprise E. He had risen to the rank of commander by this time as well. We can assume that Worf has been the first officer since 2379, when Captain Riker left the ship as this would make more sense. Before this book did come out, we did get a sort of further confirmation of Worf being the XO from an in a real life exhibit, Star Trek Picard The First Duty. The display features several items from Picard's legendary past. The same items can be seen in Star Trek Picard Episode 1, Remembrance, during the Starfleet Archives scene. A Klingon Batleth is seen on display, with a note mentioning that Commander Worf gave the item as a gift to Picard on his departure from the Enterprise in 2381. A nice little detail that informed us that Worf had risen to the rank of Commander. The Last Best Hope novel introduces us to the following events. By the time of 2381, Captain Picard is recalled back to Earth in order to meet with Starfleet CNC Admiral Victor Bordston. This meeting, in which Captain Picard, Captain Kirsten Clancy, and Admiral Borden discuss the impending Romulan supernova crisis, resulting in Jean Luc being promoted to the rank of Admiral and officially departing the Enterprise E to head up the Romulan relocation mission. Of course, Picard himself wanted to stay on board the Enterprise but Starfleet did not consider it to be wise to head the Romulan relocation effort with the flagship of the fleet, as it might convince the Romulans the rescue effort was in fact an invasion. With Picard's departure, the question arose who should be the new captain of the Federation's flagship. Naturally, Jean-Luc suggests Worf, his current first officer, to take the position. Captain Clancy, who you see as Admiral Clancy in Picard Episode 2, disagreed with his decision. Her main point was due to Worf's flawed decision in a mission to Sakara in 2374. The mission in question was when Lieutenant Commander Worf chose to save his wife from dying over extracting a Cardassian informant, who had vital information that could have helped the Federation and its allies during the Dominion War. Worf's actions in saving his wife, Jadzia Dax, resulted in the informant being killed and the information lost. Due to the clandestine nature of this operation, Worf did not face a court-martial for his decision, but a permanent note was put on his record. Clancy remarked to Picard on how Worf would not be a good choice for captaincy of a Federation's flagship. While many agreed with the future CNC's comments here, Picard did in fact remind her of a time long ago. Mainly that time when the Klingon's moon of Praxis exploded in 2293, resulting in the Klingon Empire officially moving towards peace talks with the Federation. This event led to the creation of the Kittimo Accords. While Clancy listened, Picard reminded her of how this situation was handled and how far the Federation and the Klingon Empire have come since those days. Furthermore, Picard emphasised that it could be seen of how the Romulan relations with the Federation could develop and act as a symbol to them. So there we have it, that is our confirmation that Worf is the captain of the USS Enterprise-E, following Jean-Luc Picard's departure from the ship in 2381. Now as of the new Picard series, set in 2399, we do not know the status of the Enterprise-E, nor Worf. We do know that Worf is still alive, thanks to a passing comment by Picard's housekeeper, Jaban, 
when mentioning former crew who could possibly help Jean-Luc on his new quest. The producers and writers of Star Trek Picard have stayed clear of mentioning the Enterprise so far. Whether this to be avoided for story purposes, or at the same time the ship is not entirely relevant to Jean-Luc's current story at hand. I do personally wish for an entrance like Star Trek First Contact where the Enterprise comes to save the day. It's the Enterprise! While Una McCormack's new book does give us confirmation of Worf being captain of the Enterprise E, we did get a small reference to it back in November 2019 in the IDW Star Trek Picard countdown comic. This comic hinted at Worf being the captain ever so slightly. Commander George LaForge mentions the following about the Enterprise E. I don't think the new captain will give up the chair so easily, with Picard mentioning that he takes comfort in the fact the Enterprise is in good hands. A small little detail that is easily overlooked, but this is a hint that we couldn't avoid when it was first revealed. It does remain to be seen whether the Enterprise E or Worf will be seen in Star Trek Picard. I really wish so, and if that would be officially confirm things as canon. You might be confused on why we say official canon, so let's quickly explain that. Typically, media like books and comics are not considered canon inside of a Star Trek universe. Anything on screen via series and movies is considered canon as it can easily overwrite what appears in a book or comic. However, I must say, with the new Star Trek Picard tie-in media such as the Countdown comic by IDW and the Last Best Hope book by Una McCormack, they're almost propped up and instilled as canon, due to how much detail and lore they contain with relation to the show. Though as mentioned, currently they're not considered mainline canon, and therefore we refer to books and comics as extended canon. So to wrap this little video up, as it stands in extended canon, thanks to the new book Star Trek Picard The Last Best Hope, Worf is captain of the Enterprise E. If we see this on screen or get concrete confirmation in the Picard series, I think I'll be able to die a happy man in some ways, as it just gives us more juicy lore to play with. If you've been around the Trek Central community for a while now, you know I personally love talking about starships in Star Trek and the lore surrounding them. Don't forget, brand new episodes of Star Trek Picard are every Thursday on CBS All Access and CTV Sci-Fi Canada and then Crave, then Fridays on Amazon Prime Video for international viewers. That's it from us here on Trek Central for today. If you want to keep up to date with all things Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to subscribe to Trek Central here on YouTube. You can also follow us on our social media such as Twitter and Facebook for daily updates on all things Trek. For now, I've been Captain Jack, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.